This is the Motorola X50 Ultra and the Edge 50 Ultra disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We're going to start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back cover using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back cover off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. And here's a better look at the wood back cover. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the top plastic cover, we see antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines, this flex cable which has the laser autofocus, the dual LED flash, as well as the 3-in-1 sensor which is for exposure, auto white balance, and flicker. There is also a secondary microphone located over here. The wireless charging coil is located in the center, and around that is the NFC antenna. On the other side, we can see a large area of graphite film top transfer heat. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. As for the coaxial cables, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Alright, taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera, next to that is the 50 megapixel ultra wide, and on the bottom is a 64 megapixel telephoto camera. The primary and telephoto cameras are the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's another microphone on the top corner and some graphite film to help transfer heat. And there's a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker next to the telephoto camera. Also this motherboard is a dual layer motherboard design. Looking at the other side, we can see a proximity and ambient light sensor, a 50 megapixel front facing camera, heat transfer tapes behind the camera top transfer heat, as well as graphite film and thermal paste on top of the shields. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste on top of the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. 
Moving on to the battery, it's no surprise that there are no pull tabs or a pull pouch to help you pry it off. So we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute. So it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. This is the 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see that this flex cable connects the main board to the sub board and charger port board. We also see the flex cable for the screen, which is routed right through an opening in the mid frame. At this point, there are two Phillips screws which need to be removed. This is the SIM reader board. And this is the charger port board. We can see a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, as well as a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself. Looking at the other side, we can see the primary microphone located underneath the covered shield. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. To replace the screen and fingerprint sensor, you'd have to remove the back cover, the screws on the top and bottom plastic covers, and the covers themselves. You disconnect the battery cables and the screen cable, pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable. You would also have to remove the SIM reader board, the charger port board, and the speaker, giving you access to the fingerprint sensor cable, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable for the screen back to the opening in the mid frame, as well as the fingerprint sensor cable, and then reassemble the phone. Once the flex cables have been peeled back, we can see a very large copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The linear X axis vibrator motor is located on the bottom which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that just apply some heat and pry it off. For anyone who's worried about accidentally inserting the sim ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone the bottom rubber gasket and filter is against the frame. So if you were to insert the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you would actually damage the rubber gasket or filter. However, the microphone is seated above the hole so it won't get damaged. As for the top microphone, the filter and microphone are both seated above the hole, so neither of those would get damaged. When it comes to replacing the flex cable for the volume keys or power button, as per usual with Motorola, the flex cable is routed through an opening in the mid frame, so if you need to replace that, you would actually have to pry the screen off as well. I don't know why they do that, but it definitely makes replacing that a headache since you would have to pry the screen off and there's a high chance of damaging a working screen by prying it off. The top earpiece speaker is located over here, which is also held down with some adhesive. To replace that, again, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a five out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything's back together, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.